Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a good one for you today. We're going to talk about NFTs and the fact that they're here to stay. And not only are they here to stay, I think it's fair to say we need to see the NFTs as the key, a keystone, a keystone to the Internet of Value. We're going to talk about a central bank that prepares for a CBDCs. One step closer, motion filed to intervene on the SEC versus Ripple. Don't sleep on this. There's already been a win when it comes to uh, Ripple against the world, let's say. We're going to get into that as well. And we're going to hear a word from Greg Kidd that really sums all this up so you can clearly understand what's happening here and why it's important. Gary Gensler in the SEC in a Senate confirmation today. Let's roll that beautiful intro and find out. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove at the top of the screen. Everything that we're talking about here today, we're off by more than $100 billion dollars in the crypto market space collectively we're now at 1.7 it says we're off by 5.85 percent all i know is over the weekend we were at 1.8 trillion plus and right now bitcoin is taking a bre- a breather up over 61 or 62,000 i believe it was 62,000 plus it actually topped out at taking a breather at $56,000 plus this morning still sitting over a trillion dollars of that 1.7 is sitting at bitcoin's doorstep let's go ahead and look at the number 7 spot courtesy of the dereliction of duty by the SEC, mm-hmm, going to say it every day until we get to where we need to be. 43 cents right now. We are off by 4.2 on the 24-hour and almost 9% on the seven-day. Well, then. Just a little quick note, just to see what the range is here. We're 43 cents for XRP right now, 0.4314. We're ranging between 42 and 44 cents. I know the word on the street is with technical analysis crew, uh, they're all saying basically that we're uh, hitting a support level and touching, and it looks like we may be having higher lows. So that may be a good sign for where we're going to go. I haven't taken, a, I haven't taken a second look at the chat or charts this morning, but I trust that enough people have said the right things that we need to watch out. There's a lot of a lot of technical analysis people out here. Uh, crypto wizard and others out here that we need to really pay attention to at moments like this because i do think we're close to seeing some action at some point all right now let me just yeah anyone else notice this is real quick before we move on when i every time i refresh or pull up fiat links it used to show all the trades just like this but now i think they've changed it to where it shows the comment section and you know I don't know. That it just doesn't feel like it's that informative to me. I want to see the trades. Fiat Leak, if you're listening, can we default back to just seeing the trades first? And then if I want to see the comments of somebody who's put fifty dollars into crypto and then expects to see their fortune in ten minutes, um, that could be something I choose to click on. I mean, I just think that'd be the better road to go. Food for thought. That's where we're at this morning. Okay, let's get into the news. This is James Rule XRP. Just purchased the new Kings of Leon NFT, an album. I like it. Yeah, Kings of Leon, a huge band that is doing NFTs. And I just think that's remarkable. Again, I think for songwriters, artists, producers, people uh, who have intellectual property, right? You know, this is a chance, like I said, for NFTs to really become a keystone to the Internet of Value, bringing the power of ownership back to the Internet. For those intellectual property owners. That is amazing stuff. And here's more evidence of that. We see Algo. Shout out to Algorand. I do hold Algo. um, For those that are interested. I try to let people know what coins I hold. And not too long from now. I'm going to release another newsletter. So uh, make sure you sign up for that. In the description box. In the comment section. There's going to be some exclusive content. In that newsletter. Italy's copyright body. SIAE. To use Algorand public blockchain. Well, I'm happy about that because I'm an Algo holder. So congratulations to them. And it's a win-win because it's for artists. So I absolutely love seeing this. Again, I believe 
you know, this whole space is very important for intellectual property holders. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Thai CP Group backed Velo merges with Stellar startup Interstellar in a nine figure deal. Details of merger unknown. People familiar with the deal said that Velo Labs acquired Interstellar to accelerate its blockchain remittance network development. I look in here and I just saw a quick spot that I want to give you guys so you get a, a better grasp of what's happening here. Velo Labs, a cross-border settlement protocol backed by Thai conglomerate CP Group, has merged with Interstellar, a payment startup that runs on Stellar Network. The firm announced on Monday that the following merge, Interstellar CEO Mike Kennedy and CTO James Wu, will become the new CTO and CEO of Velo Labs, respectively. Interstellar was formed in 2018 as Visa and Citibank Chain was acquired by Stellar startup Lightyear.io, which teamed up with two crypto, or two crypto entrepreneurs, Adam Ludwin and Jeb McCaleb. That later, uh, the latter now serves as the founder of Interstellar. Down here, I just wanted to show you the comment that Jeb had made here. And he said that uh, this is a significant step uh, for the Stellar ecosystem, the potential to drive more anchors to the network, creating new on and off ramps in Asia and business opportunities for both Velo and Stellar communities. So shout out to them. And just to know, uh, also, what we're talking about here is CP Group now owns a variety of businesses, including food processing, retail shops, such as all 7-Eleven convenience stores in Thailand, as well as telecommunication. Not a small deal. That's a big one for Stellar. All right, so now this gets to uh, central banks here. South Korea's uh, Shinhan Bank trials new digital currency platform. If the Bank of Korea issues a CBDC, an intermediary agency will be necessary to smooth distribution and the use of digital currency. Sounds familiar? It sure does. And I just want to say, because I know there's a lot of people right now with a knee-jerk reaction going, dude, South Korea, Central Bank, I mean, platform, what, what are we talking about here? Well, what we're talking about here is that the world's connected through global trade. And this doesn't work if only one bank is ready to do a CBDC, right? And I think what we need to remember, too, is to go along with that is the larger macro view. If you pull back the lens a little bit here, what we're really talking about is that banks are working together, the central banks working together around the world in a timely effort to be coordinated to launch their CBDCs at a time that they're aware of that we're not. And I'm convinced of that because there's a lot of the world that's further along than other parts of the world. But they haven't chose to go yet by themselves. Well, two reasons. One, it don't work by yourself. Two, it's a globally coordinated effort or otherwise, why would the world continue to wait for the U.S.? All right, moving on here. So here is Ripple wins case filed by Tetragon Financial. Now, this is a win column here, okay? This is one for the win column. I covered this the other day, but this is just to set the tone because we're about to talk about a very important case that has put an extreme amount of pressure on the SEC versus Ripple, I believe. And that's not over yet. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But just to highlight here quickly is that Ripple went, won the case uh, filed by Tetragon Financial that tried to recoup the $175 million they invested in the Ripple. But the reality is, is the judge cited that uh, Tetragon was a little early to the dance. And they said, you can go ahead and sit down because as long as we don't have a decision by the court case uh, currently saying that XRP is a security, Tetragon does not have a case citing for Ripple. Case closed. All right, moving on. This is not closed. And this here is John Deaton putting the pressure on, baby. John Deaton putting the pressure on. Shout out to you, John, and everything that you're doing. He files a motion to intervene in the Ripple case. And the South District of New York, as an XRP holder, he is filing the motion. Let's just look at this very quickly. All right, so now when I look at this on March 5th, this is the part you're going to want here. March 5th, the SEC responded with a motion to dismiss my petition. In it, the agency again sh uh, shirked any responsibility for catastrophic harm caused by its actions against Ripple and its executives. Instead, the SEC blamed cryptocurrency exchanges for causing the financial harm suffered by XRP holders, despite Jay Clayton himself having been warned 
of the massive impact by former SEC Commissioner Joseph Grunfest. Uh, In its motion to dismiss my petition, the SEC said that the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York is the only forum to weigh all matters related to their actions against Ripple and XRP holders by default. He says, here, an avenue for judicial review of the commission's complaint against Ripple clearly exists. The Southern District of New York will decide whether the complaint warrants any relief. Thus, the commissioner's enforcement proceeding in Southern District of New York brought under the Securities Act supplies the exclusive method for testing validity of the commission's complaint against Ripple. They're laying it at the Southern District Court's feet saying you make the call if the southern district of new york is the exclusive venue for decisions that have already proven to have a massive impact on xrp holders and are likely to set the course for the future of all cryptocurrencies in the u.s then that's where we must go ripple larson and garlinghouse are focused on defending their interest against the sec's attack in a 1.3 billion dollar the agency requested uh from them in damages it's not up to them to defend mine or the interest of any other xrp holders we didn't buy xrp from them nor did we consider ripple success as a company when we bought it damn right it's up to us to defend ourselves against the sec and here he says today i am filing a motion to intervene in that case in the exclusive venue to represent our interest i'm calling the agency on his argument and i will see this through to the end damn right john deaton you go ahead buddy i'm with you and here we see the summation from greg kidd who says it better than anyone i've heard say it right here maximum hypocrisy SEC is suing to dismiss the case from investors by claiming that it's not clear that XRP is a security while suing Ripple for saying that they should have known seven years ago that XRP is a security. Shameless. Shame. Shame, SEC. (laughs) Shame. And finally, what we're really concerned about here, while all of that melees lays out there, uh, here's what we're really concerned about here today. Gary Gensler. Is Gary Gensler going to be confirmed today? That's what the question is. And here is on the docket the schedule for the Senate right here. March 15th, today, it does show Gary Gensler of Maryland to be a member of the Securities Exchange Commission in the remainder term, June 5th, 2021. Uh, you know, this is pretty remarkable. We're going to have to see. And then obviously his he would finish the term of Gary or Jay Clayton. And then obviously it would carry his full term until June 5th, 2026. I should share that as well. But nevertheless, the point is, is that will we see him confirmed today? And I tell you, I hope we do. And I hope we do because it is darkest just before the dawn. And I think Gary Gensler, from what I have watched and learned from him in interviews and articles, comments that he's made, I have no reason to believe that Gary Gensler wouldn't be a great leader for the SEC in this particular moment when it comes to digital assets. I mean, this guy is versed better than almost anybody we've ever come across in the uh, regulatory sector. So I'm excited to see him come in. I don't know if we'll all be excited about everything that he may think or do, but I think it'll be overall better for the space collectively, no doubt about it. And remember, it is always darkest just before the dawn. The darkest hour from Dark Defender is just before the dawn. He says here, we could see XRP at $1.00 very soon. He's not the only one. There's quite a few out here calling for that. So make sure you keep your head on a swivel. This is crypto and you never know. And that's your news this morning. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. There's some really great products and services that I use each and every day. Remember, this is March Madness. There's going to be a new category released by Unstoppable Domains. It is remarkable remarkable these dot cryptos that have been available make sure you check that link out as well and clinton donnelly tax time if you haven't done it reach out to clinton donnelly he can help you he is the man with a plan the crypto tax fixer i'll catch you on the next one